Hi, I'm Harper. Ciao, I'm Eva. Today we're here to make a much requested recipe, one that actually Ava made in a previous video, which you can watch here, but it was very brief and I would like to learn how to make it myself because it's one of my favorites, so maybe you'd like to learn with us too. We are going to make the very famous uh, bracciole. Before we begin, a quick shout out to a pasta grammarian in action. Kristen made a polpettone alla Genovese. Did I get that right? <laughs> Thank you, Kristen, for trying out the recipe. If you want to become a pasta grammarian, then hit that subscribe button and let's get cooking. What do we have in front of us? I'll start easy. We've got pepper, salt, olive oil, pecorino. Pecorino cheese. Pecorino cheese. White wine, pine nuts, raisins, carrots, celery, onion, parsley, garlic. We've got some very thin cut beef steaks. This kind of dish can be made also with pork or veal, but we choose beef. Just a side note, Ava once made this with pork skin. If you can find that, it will change your life. We're using beef today because it's easier, I imagine, but you know, just, just saying. Uh, here we have uh, not breadcrumbs, like torn up bread, fresh bread, not even dry, right? This is what in Italian we call mollica di pane, that is the inside part of the bread. I don't know how do you call this in English. Torn up bread, I don't know. Okay. We have a word for it, I don't think. So this. And here we have something interesting, uh, a can of whole tomatoes, but they're yellow tomatoes. Okay, now we are going to use this because this is what we have at home. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it's what we have at home. I was expecting like, oh, the real bracciola <laughs> only uses yellow tomatoes. No. If at home you have the normal San Marzano tomatoes or a very good tomato puree, feel free to use that. It's okay. Okay, Harper, to make our bracciola, we need to start from the meat which okay. means that we need to use this amazing tool. Very excited. Two pieces, two big pieces of parchment paper. Okay. Uh, this can be enough because... Okay. okay, we need to pour one slice of beef here. Perfect. Now... Fold it. Close it. And Harper, gentle. 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 How do you say? Battere la carne. Beat the meat. How do you say? Don't say that. In Italian we say battere la carne. And don't don't say that in English. Like this? Like this. I assume we're trying to make it as flat as possible. Um, as thin as possible. See, thin but not too thin. Harper, like perfect. That really worked. So Harper, now that our meat is ready, we need to stuff it. We start with pour inside some bread. I just sort of sprinkle it. Uh, yes, but keep in mind that this will be rolled. So let's try not... Not on the edges? Bravo. I assume that the amounts that you use are kind of dependent on how big your meat is. Because yes. you've made small ones, you've made big ones. Yes, because if you have a small cut of meat, you don't need as much bread as we need right now. So just use your own judgment. Then raisins. some raisin. This is maybe the first time I've ever seen you not soak raisins before putting them in. They're just dry. They are dried up because we are going to cook them in liquid, so... Oh, so will... you don't need to soften them. Then, some pine, pine nuts. nuts. That seem okay? That seems perfect. Parsley. Parsley, but you need to cut the parsley inside. All right, let me try my, my Ava cutting technique. Pay attention, Arthur. Don't try this at home, kids. Okay. Then we need to peel the garlic and chop the garlic and put here inside. Thank you for picking the absolute tiniest clove of garlic possible. Arthur, the rule is that we need an inch of garlic. We don't need... We don't need the... So you would actually recommend going with a little mini clove of garlic like this? See. <laughs> 
I don't know how you do this so fast. I have some years of, years of experience out there, so. Okay, garlic in. Perfetto. Salt. Peppers. Pepper. Pepper. Peppers. Peppers. I like the plural. And then, last but not least. Of course, you need some cheese. We need some cheese. Now, you can choose two ways. So you can grate some cheese, or you can very, very, very thin, cut it very thin slice and put here. Why do I have a feeling you want me to do the very, very thin slices? <laughs> you know, because here there isn't a grater, so you understand. Okay. Look at how thin that is. Bravo. And then I just kind of break it up into pieces. Bravissimo, Harper. This is, this is really a bizarre recipe. It's like, who thought of this? Actually, Harper, I don't know who invented this. Now, this is also... I didn't really expect you to know <laughs> the person who invented bracciola. And now, Harper, what we need to do is uh, close it. I, I have my ideas for this, but what is the best method in your opinion? Personally, what usually I do, I roll it uh -huh. and then I close and then the sides. you tuck side. the insides, okay. Then, it's up to you. We need it closed. Okay, I'm gonna go for the tuck. Do this how you think that it will work. I trust you. <laughs> if then a good idea. you destroy my bracciole. <laughs> okay, I don't think that's too bad. And now, Harper, we need to... Tie it up. It's very important, Harper, that what is inside... Stays inside. Bravo, so. See now, we have the potential for some serious embarrassment on my part, considering the fact that I used to be a sailor and I consider myself a literal expert on knots and rope. So let's hope I can do an okay job here. Can I borrow a finger? Okay. Boom! Look at that. Okay, here we have a pine nut, but... Okay, you know, I lost one pine nut. What's one pine nut in the grand scheme of bracciola? One pine nut less when you will eat them. All right, now I assume you want me to repeat all of that with the second piece of meat. Yes, we need to do the same thing when the, with, with the second piece of meat. All right, we'll be back in a few minutes once I'm done with this one. Another fine looking bracciola, if I may say so myself. And now, Harper, we need to cook our bracciola. That makes sense. So, we start with the sofrito. Carrots, onion, celery, olive oil, and a little bit of love. Okay, got our onion. Oh, one of our viewers gave us a tip about biting a matchstick, and that keeps you from crying but I don't have any matches, actually. Harper, the celery doesn't make you cry, so same thing with the celery. What if it's a very mean celery? Carrot. Same thing with half carrots. Very, very fine, Harper. Okay. We are going to use a terracotta pot now. If you don't have, use a normal pot. Well, a little okay. bit more, that's okay. There's a frito there. I know what I'm doing. I, this is not my first sofrito. Okay. So, turn on the heat. Doing like medium? Uh, medium high because medium high. Uh, the terracotta- I was just testing you, I knew that. The terracotta takes some time to- Oh yeah, it heats up kind of slowly. Being the sofrito expert that I am, we let this sort of uh, uh, saute until the onions are kind of uh, uh, slightly uh, tender and transparent, about two to three minutes. The smell of the sofrito is one of the best 
smell in the world. I don't understand why I you know like Dior, Chanel, Versace, Armani. They didn't think a perfume with the smell of the sofrito. Hmm, a cologne that smells like sofrito. I can't believe I'm saying this, but that's not a bad idea. The meat there. The meat. So I want to kind of brown the meat, right? We need to brown the meat a little bit. Okay. It's a weird recipe. It's so weird. Look at this. Look at what I'm cooking right now. It's kind of strange. Sometimes we do also the big one, and for big I mean something like that. So. So I assume I just want to kind of See, brown cook them the on meat. all sides. Yeah. You know what? You should stir also the onion, otherwise uh, the onion will burn. No, I don't want to. No. Oh, yep. Yeah, good call. Now, one thing that is important to know if someone will make the bracciola with the pork skin is that the pork skin easily stick to the pot, to the pan. Oh. So pay attention. All right, I think it's pretty good. I don't see any more pink. Okay, so now, Harper, you can add the wine. The wine. I prefer what wine because it doesn't change the color of the meat. But feel free also to use red wine. What it happens is that your meat will be darker, mm. but we need to let the wine completely evaporate. Completely, all the liquid? Yes, all the liquid needs to evaporate, okay. uh, which means that it can take in between uh, 20, 25 minutes. Okay, well, we'll be back in a little bit. And we're back, as you can see, Pretty much all the wine is evaporating, we've just got the oil left. And this is the moment in which we will put our tomatoes. Oh, they're like cherry tomatoes. See, they are yellow cherry tomatoes. Should I just pour them in? Pour the tomatoes inside. All of them? All of them. Because they are cherry tomatoes, mm -hmm. we need some water. So go and clean this with some water. Just a little bit of water. It's like an inch. So if you're using like canned whole tomatoes, you would add some water. And if you're using just uh, puree, you wouldn't. It depends from your tomato puree, because if you do the tomato puree at home, it will be much more watery, so you don't need them. Oh, water. but if it's from a can, you but probably do? But it's from a can, yes, because they are enough thick. What we miss is salt. Then we will try during the process of cooking, but I will Just put another bit now. one. And now the only thing that we need to do is let them cook. It can be one hour and a half, two hours. This is not a very fast recipe. So we cover it. We reduce a little bit the heat. What we are looking for is a thickener sauce. Thicker sauce. Thicker sauce, sorry. A thicker sauce. And the meat should be soft. So soft that you could be able to cut just with a fork. Okay, well, we'll be back when our sauce is thickener and the meat can be cut with a fork. Okay, it's been about an hour and a half, and our sauce has thickened up quite a bit here. There's a lot of sauce, though. Yes, there is a lot of sauce because uh, traditionally this uh, dish uh, is made for having the sauce for the pasta. Oh. And the meat uh, as a second course. Oh, so we would take this out and then keep cooking the sauce and make a pasta dish with it. Perfetto, Harper. So, if you want to have a complete uh, meal, meal, you can cook the pasta and eat the bracciole as the second course. All right, so are these ready to serve? They are ready to be eaten and I can't wait. I'm very excited. It's bracciola time. As you can see, Ava served it with some extra sauce. Be sure to take the string off, cut the string off before you eat it. That is probably obvious, but you know, no. frivolous lawsuits do exist, so just saying. Can we try it? We have to, to see how you did the bracciola, because I know how I make bracciola. I don't know how you make bracciola. <laughs> 
<laughs> Nor do I. Now, normally you would serve this atop a bed of pasta, right? Never. Don't say something like that because I will not make you eat the bracciole. Pasta is by itself, with the sauce, but not with the meat on top. Never. Buon appetito. Buon appetito. Now that I've got your heart racing. You did a great job because these are amazing. Do you know what I think this is missing though? It's missing one thing, a single pine nut. If it had one more pine nut, it would be perfect. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh well, better luck next time. Guys, we hope you enjoyed this recipe. If you try it, tag us on a picture on social media, Facebook or Instagram, at Pastagrammar. If you wanna learn how to make some fresh pasta to go with that sauce that you just made, then check out Ava's complete guide to homemade pasta. It'll be down in the description below. We'll see you guys next time. Ciao. Ciao.